Welcome to the Big Time Thinking Podcast. <laughs> This content is brought to you by taking thousands of arrows right in the back and doing something about it. Do not listen. If you're emotionally fragile, sensitive to the white elephant in the room, or can't handle the next level, you can't handle the truth. Big Time Thinking doesn't have all the answers. It's just an attitude that keeps seeking the living fuck out of them. Cave dwellers will be fascinated by the shadows that big time thinking will create. We are just here to lead you one step closer to outside of the cave. Quit winking at girls in the dark. Get them to sign on the line which is dotted. And get ready to scale your sales, your dealership, your business, your life, your family, and your friends with big time thinking. Put that coffee down. Coffee's for closers only. Without further ado, here is the founder and CEO of Big Time Advertising, Terry McCauley. Oh, have I got your attention now? Buckle up. Reality starts right fucking now. Oh yeah, here we go. We're back and better than ever, I guess, as they say. Uh, so excited to have our next podcast. But before we get going, a couple things I want to discuss uh, real quick. One, if you're already listening to our podcast, uh, there's a very high likelihood that one, you're a great friend uh, of myself personally or the agency. Or secondly, you're one of my employees, friends, and family, and we're growing this thing organically, which we understand. We want to get this content out to so many more people, especially in the automotive industry, or really anyone that wants to better their career uh, with a focus in selling and possibly marketing as well because we're going to intertwine the two with big time thinking. But here's the key, guys. We need you to share it to your Facebook, retweet on your Twitter. Don't just share it and retweet it. Put some comments out there. Hey, guys, check out Terry McCauley with Big Time Thinking and Big Time Advertising. Got some great content. I learned yada, yada, yada. But the more you do that for us, the more we're going to grow this quickly and it will be greatly appreciated. You'll see myself interacting with you as well if I see the retweets and the comments. Uh, we're going to get involved with you. The other thing I need you to do is go to iTunes and make sure you subscribe to this podcast and you're not just going directly uh, off of our Facebook feed or our website, bigtimethinking.com. Those are obviously appreciated too, but we need you to subscribe. The more subscribers we get at iTunes, the better we're able to push this out to more people. And that's the goal of this Big Time Thinking. We're not just doing this for ourselves. We really want to give back and help people learn more about how they can help their own business and or dealerships, okay? So it's really important. Make sure you leave us ratings as well. Those ratings obviously help. But with that being said, let's jump in. And today's podcast is actually titled, Don't Be a Dick. And it's that simple. I hate to be that direct, but it couldn't be that more simple, guys. So we're going to jump into this, this podcast. And I'm going to kind of set the table for you as to what we're going to do with the next few podcasts uh, and where we're going to be going with our discussions. But we're going to start out with this one right here being Don't Be a Dick. And this is geared at salespeople in general and anybody in your organization learning to basically be nice. It's that simple. Don't be a dick, be nice. Uh, because we know that there are statistics out there that have taught us that 71% of our customers buy from us because they like us, trust us, and respect us. Okay, and we're going to dive into that really deep here. But let me read that again. 71% of customers buy from us because they like us, trust us, and respect us. Okay, so let me start right there. Number one, if, if I can't get you to agree to percentages with me, there's really nowhere we can go together in these podcasts, okay? I'm, I'm a, uh, a factual driven type person and if, if something makes sense to me, I'll say, okay, there's something to that we need to go. So if we can buy into the fact that 71% of everyone's buying because they like us, trust us, and respect us, what does that mean? It means our odds are a lot better when we get customers to like us, right? So that should be the norm. That should be a goal. With that being said, getting someone to like us We all think, oh, that's simple. We just get, we just got to be nice. It's more than that, right? So, and that's what big time thinking is about: is diving into this, talking about it, understanding it, and saying, what does this mean to what I'm doing as an employee in my organization? And am I, am I really bettering myself and my company to make us a better dealer, right? So, with that being said, what I'm talking about is developing a skill, and it is indeed a skill. Learning to get people to like you, trust you, and respect you is indeed a skill. It comes more naturally to some than others, okay? So let's talk about all the different skills that are out there, and we're not going to do them today, but 
we all think we know what a skill is. Oh, yeah, you got to have good skills. But, guys, there are so many skills, and the art of becoming better day after day is developing these skills. Okay, so one of the, one of the skills that we're obviously hitting today is the art of getting people to like, trust, and respect us. We call that rapport building in the car business, learning to build rapport with our customers. All right? So with that being said, there's also other skills, and we all know what they are. They could be phone skills, right? Learning to answer the phone and how to handle objections would be another skill. Learning to negotiate would be another skill. Presenting a product is a skill. Demonstrating a product is a skill. So those are some of the skills that are involved in the sales process, and there are so many more. Share with us some of the skills you struggle with, and maybe we can get to some of those. But today, we're talking about don't be a dick. What does that mean? Well, it can mean a lot of things. Don't be a dick is really simple. It's having a mindset and a culture that every customer matters. You know, there's that old saying, customer's always right. And let's be candid real quick. If it's just me and you and the friends hanging out in the bar, customers aren't always right, right? Actually, sometimes customers can be complete freaking dicks, okay? But it doesn't matter because once you start going into this big time thinking and deciding, I want to sell everybody that I can sell because that's how I get paid and to steal a little bit from Grant Cardone and share what he believes, like who's got my money and how do I get it, right? So the minute you start mentally eliminating people because you don't like them or you think they're tough, they don't want to listen, they've got their own agenda, they were on Consumer Reports, they, they already know what they want for their trade, they want too much of a discount on my product. And if we have this mentality that this guy's a jerk and we don't spend time to develop rapport with this customer, we are already eliminating the ability to scale our dealership, right? And our own individual numbers selling vehicles. Let me, let me just pause right there a little bit and talk about the importance of this culture, right? So I'm actually speaking to managers, speaking directly to sales managers and general managers. And if you're an employee, a salesperson who works for a dealership that needs this developed, be that light, be that beacon. But you must start developing a culture where kindness is rewarded, right? Uh, I'm out on the road all the time and I'm visiting with dealers and I am amazed. I get Sometimes I'll get asked by certain dealers, Terry, how can we get a better Google rating? How can we get a better Yelp rating? How can we get a better Facebook rating? Seems like we get a lot of bad ratings. And uh, with, without being too direct, I think it's one of the dumbest questions I've ever been asked, right? What do you mean, how do you get more ratings? And I know what they're asking. They're asking, hey, is there a way to cheat the system? Is there a way to get good reviews? Uh, can we give a gift to get a reward? And that's where their all mindset is. No, it's simple, guys create a culture of being nice and guess what will happen you will start getting nice great reviews right so what does that mean it doesn't mean giving the farm away every time a customer wants something it's building rapport so that when there is tension with a customer or an objection with a customer we'll get in objections or concerns with a customer we have to ask ourselves the question have we built enough rapport in order to overcome all these obstacles right we all have family we argue with family every day but we still do what we still love them why do we still love family by and large or our best friends? And why can we have fights and still get along? Because we have true rapport with them. We have this forgiving nature. So that will come out in our customers too if we develop this skill of building rapport. And this rapport, again, the goal of it is to get our customers to like us, trust us, and respect us. Trying to get this done too, by the way, is, is, is not a, like a, you can't be fake. Customers will see through that too. People are begging for authenticity. Okay, and you know, all these recent airline disasters that have happened on these airlines, right? Not knowing how to handle tough customer. I'm amazed by it because we're losing this ability to have a skill of building rapport with people. We're gonna talk about this like right now because it's important. The other thing I'm seeing in dealerships that's very, very concerning is how quick we are to judge people and not give them an opportunity to just tell us where they're at in life. So what am I talking about? Uh, let's talk about that road to the sale in the car business, really, or any business. Uh, everybody's got a different road to the sale, but the one thing they all have in common is certain fundamentals. And I will tell you, after a good first impression with your customers, you've got to start building rapport. It, it's like where it all begins. If you can't build rapport with your customers, there's really nowhere else you can go, right? So building rapport, what is building rapport? Building rapport is asking those questions that we all know, the who, what, when, where, and whys, right? This means you got to genuinely take an interest in your customer. So many of the salespeople I have worked with will tell me, oh, no, Terry, I do try to build rapport. And I always tell them, no, you think you do try to build rapport and you really don't. Okay? So people ask one, two questions typically, but they're usually only one or two more questions away from really diving into knowing more about their customer. 
Okay, so building rapport with a customer isn't knowing their name, right? That should be automatic. And I will tell you, I can't tell you how many times I've walked into dealerships at the desk and I see a sales guy and they're asking for numbers and he doesn't know the name of his customer. So managers, I'm challenging you here. You've got to develop that culture I'm talking about in terms of a culture that demands that you build rapport with your customers. Well, man, Terry, how do I do that? These sales guys need numbers, we're a volume store. No, nope. who controls the deal? The desk, right? The desk always controls the deal. If your salespeople are controlling you, that's another thing. And salespeople, if you are controlling the desk and skipping these steps, you're gonna skip a sale. So what can a manager do to slow this down? Uh, I've always said there's a heartbeat to a deal, right? A heartbeat is, means just what it sounds like. If sales guys are to your desk, let's say they greet a customer over the phone or on an email lead or even right there on the lot, if they're at your desk asking for numbers for a customer within five, 10 minutes, I would challenge you they have no rapport with that customer. Zero, zip, zilch. They don't have any rapport, okay? And how do you know it? Just ask them questions at the desk. Hey, what's this guy's name? If they can't answer that, say, great, go back out and get his name, and then we'll talk about price and payment and those types of things, right? So that's one question. Then if they know a name, go, great, where is he from? What does he do for a living? How many children does he have? Okay, and you'd be like, man, why are you doing that? We're just here to sell a car. No, you're right. I am dead serious about selling cars, and that's why I've always sold more. Why I've always sold more? Because I'm gonna sell cars today, tomorrow, and in the future. So let's talk about that too. How powerful is the word of mouth, right? It is the single most powerful form of advertising. Uh, I have it written on my laptop in bold, right down in the bottom right corner on my Mac Pro. It says the most powerful medium in the world is word of mouth. Right, so I sell TV, radio, digital advertising, pay-per-click, geofencing, social media advertising. I sell all these forms of advertising, but I will never ever forget that the most powerful form of advertising is word of mouth. We're seeing it each and every day in social media when something goes viral, it's all word of mouth. This day and age, word of mouth can go viral in, in a New York minute, right? It can go so fast and it's really scary. But word of mouth will always be your most powerful form of advertising. You can't track it on an Excel sheet, Right, It's not going to come in on your digital dashboard, but it is the silent killer, folks. It's referrals, right? So let's talk about rapport. Even if I don't sell a customer and they buy elsewhere, God forbid, and I've built true rapport, what are the odds of them maybe telling someone about me and my dealer? It's only better, and that's all I know. Okay, so like with Memorial Day coming up or 4th of July, do you want a customer who's out there going, Man, I didn't buy from this guy, but man, what a real professional. He treated me so well. He listened to me. He built rapport with me. I liked him. I didn't end up buying a car from him because I wanted something different. You should give him a shot. Okay, you need to ask yourself, look in the mirror. Do you think people are talking that way about you? If they are, good. You're down the right road. If they're not, shame on you. You really need to dial this in. But I, I think each and every one of us, myself included, can always do a better job of building rapport. Okay, so let's, let's move this down the road a little, little further. And um, I can't think of a better analogy. So in the comments, guys, I've been using this for years. And I know this day and age, uh, it, doesn't, it doesn't come across well, but it is the best analogy for building rapport. Here's what I mean, especially in sales, in our sales world, okay? So if let's imagine we walk into any given bar on any given night, okay? We look good. We got our best shirt on. We've got our favorite go-to uh cologne or perfume on and we just we feel like a million bucks right we walk in and we're there to have a cocktail with some friends but we're also single and we're kind of on the market right we're out there looking well up approaches a, a female or a male and this can go either way someone you're you're attracted to they're they're attractive looking they seem nice and within the first few seconds you guys just say a quick first impression you say hello how are you and the first thing that comes out of your mouth is hey you want to go back to my place and have sex I know, it probably caught you off guard, but think about that. So there's only two scenarios, right? Uh, one is an absolute no, you're shut down. Uh, not going to talk to you the rest of the night. You could possibly get slapped. Uh, rumors about you from here on out. Or you potentially could end up, I guess, having sex with that person. But let's think about that. Is that really who you're after, right? So in the sales world, that would be called a lay down, wouldn't it, right? Everybody can sell those people. Even five car Fred at the dealership uh, with no skills at all, everybody can sell that person. If we want to scale our numbers and be a better salesperson, then you better have the ability to build rapport and not pounce on every customer like you've never had one in your whole life. What am I talking about? Guys, I listen to hundreds of phone calls every week from salespeople 
in dealerships across the country. What do I hear? And the guys I'm hearing it all the time, and it tells me one, managers aren't listening to phone calls, and two, they're not being, they're not training their people to build rapport. Here's a here's a very typical phone call. ABC dealer, this is Terry. I'm calling about a price on a Dodge Stratus in your inventory. Okay, we've got salespeople from there going great. Uh, where do you work? Do you have a job? When can you come in to buy a car? Uh, can I set an appointment? I can't give you a price till you come in. Guys, that is the equivalent to that person walking in a bar and basically asking them to have sex with you right away without building any kind of rapport, trying to find out if, if we're a match or not a match. Sales is no different, okay? And, I, and I, I'm not using the analogy the whole way, but I'm using it for, for visual. Do you get it? Is an alarm bell going off? Someone calls your business asking to do business with you, and all you have to say is, great, when can you come in? Guys, just the other day, I was trying to buy a hot tub from a company. My wife and I were thinking about getting a hot tub. I submitted a form, an online form. They immediately call me. When can you have an appointment? When can you have an appointment? I said, I just want a price of the, when can you get an appointment? Didn't ask what I wanted to do with it. Then asked how I intended to pay for it. How are you going to pay for this? Are you financing it? Well, little did he know, I'm, I was probably going to pay cash for this thing. We're doing this in the car business and in every business every single day. I'm tired of seeing it. We've got to get back to fundamentals. We've got to build rapport. Terry, how do you build rapport? Guys, rapport building should be the most exhausting thing you do every day. When you go home from work uh, at 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 o'clock and you're done at the dealership, you should be so tired of talking to people that you almost don't want to talk to your mom, your significant others when you get home. You're that tired. Because building rapport really is, hey, how you doing, man? Where are you from? What do you do for a living, right? That's what true rapport building is, okay? So you've got to learn to slow it down. And even when you get someone who's direct, and we'll get into these skills later about redirecting, but if someone calls your store, start learning to use power words when they walk in the store. Why aren't we saying things like, congratulations, who's the vehicle for, you or someone else? Slow it down. There's only one answer to that question. They might say it's for me. And my wife, we're looking for a van. Man, that's awesome. Where are you guys from, right? Because we're all looking for those degrees of separation, okay? If you pounce into sales mode immediately without building rapport, you're just another sales hack. Don't be a sales hack. Start thinking big time and start thinking about how I'm going to take this one person and I'm going to get them to tell me about everybody in their circle of influence so that I can sell more cars. Quit thinking about one deal right now. You're gonna get the deal if you're a pro, and the way a pro does it is he slows it down and he builds rapport. What else will rapport building do? It's gonna help us overcome objections when we have them in presenting numbers. Terry, how would that do that? I'm gonna give you a real example, it's really simple. So let's slow it down. We start building rapport with a, a man and woman sitting in front of me, right? Female's pregnant, okay? She's got one kid with her that's kind of running around, not, not real well behaved, she's embarrassed with it. You got a guy there who's Mr. Negotiator. We've all seen him. Uh, oh, I've been shopping you online. I've got the best price. If that's where the conversation's going, you're in trouble if you haven't built rapport, right? So Mr. Fred and his wife, whatever their names might be, Betty, Betty and Fred, it doesn't matter. And you better be speaking to women, folks, because I'm telling you 90% of all decision makers are females. And if you don't believe that, we'll have a whole other podcast on that. I have an old saying, 90% of decisions are made by a female. The other 10% are liars. It's real simple. Okay, but so include them both in a conversation and start asking them. When they start hitting you with, hey, what's the price? Hey, Mr. and Ms. Cusser, I'm absolutely going to give you a price. I've never lost a deal over price. In fact, I can't imagine selling to someone that doesn't get a great price. But I want to do everything I can today to make sure you guys are comfortable with me as a salesperson or dealership because, guys, there's really way more to this than just buying a car. I don't want you driving down the road in a great price. I want you driving down the road in a beautiful vehicle that serves your family needs. Okay, so, and then they're gonna say, what family needs? Well, there's all kinds of family needs. Is it, you guys are now, I see you guys are now expecting, and by the way, congratulations. What do you do for a living? Where are they gonna go to school, right? What kind of utility things are you gonna be using this van for? Obviously, safety is important. When you guys take vacations, do you fly? Do you take your vehicle? Do you ever take rental cars? Guys, I know I'm starting to sound like a pro now, aren't I? I'm developing things that will have everything to do with negotiating a deal. It's not about price, it never has been, but all you weak salespeople make it about price because you don't slow it down, you're too anxious, and you haven't worked to develop each and every skill it takes to sell more. 
Okay, so what I love about the car business is a deal, it, it, it happens on crack, right? You're selling cars in 60 minutes, okay? These fundamentals I'm applying today with my own advertising agency, guys, and that sales process can take two years. I can meet somebody for two years. And uh, I've had people tell me, man, you're really nice, that guy, and you seem like you do a lot for him because I want him to be a client one day. I realize that not everybody's a buyer right now, and I'm okay with that, right? Let me repeat that. Not everybody's a buyer from me right now, today, and I'm 100% okay with that. I want to build this pipeline of people that I'm comfortable talking with. Okay, so we've built rapport. Are we taking notes? We've learned how many kids they've got. Hey, what sports do the kids play? What do you actually do at your job? You know, when someone just tells you, hey, I work for Boeing, well, that's great, guys. You, you, your job of building rapport hasn't stopped. What do you do for Boeing? I'm a teacher. Oh, great. Where do you teach? What grade do you teach? What subjects do you teach? Now I'm taking a real interest. If you just ask those questions because you learned it in training, it was important somewhere, and you really don't give a shit, you're really a piece of shit because you're not building real rapport with your customers. Build rapport. Then with your CRM products, those notes should be going in there because God forbid you have to follow up with somebody ever and pick the phone up and salespeople go, oh, I don't want to call, I don't want to talk about. Well, couldn't you pick the phone up and say, hey, Bob, how's the job at Boeing going? Yeah, I just saw him in the news the other day. Oh, and by the way, it's soccer season. How's little Johnny doing? You told me he loves to play soccer. That's rapport building. Who do you think he's more likely to buy from? A professional who's built rapport or someone down the road that hasn't and skips it? Okay, so that's, that's what I'm talking about when I'm talking about building a skill set. And the number one skill set for me, guys, has always been building rapport. Everything else, all the skills are important, but it starts there. Customers will be more forgiving with you if you've got rapport with them. You make a mistake, they're more forgiving with you. After they buy, if they have a problem with the product, they're more forgiving with you because you have a basis point to go back to. Hey, let me remind you, I'm Terry McCauley. I'm here to take care of you. Remember me? We joked and we had so much fun in the showroom. I'm the same guy. I can't help you with you being so mad at me. Please forgive me. Let me figure out how to take care of you. Guys, that's what it takes to become bigger and better than you thought you could ever become. One last reminder, this is over the phone, this is in an email, that's another skill. If you need to learn how to write better emails when you're texting your customers, is all you text, when are you coming in, when can I talk to you? You have not developed that skill of rapport building, right? I, I myself, all of us, we have it. We have that ability in our own psyche to know when we are onto a salesperson in attack mode. If all you can ever email and all you can ever say on the phone and all you can ever text is, when are you coming in, are you buying today? You're weak, man. Time to develop better skills, right? There's someone better than you selling more cars, selling more of anything and everything. That's how I've had success in selling, guys. And I'm telling you, it starts with good rapport building. And then lastly, I want to talk about the culture. You've got to develop the culture, guys. Being nice goes everywhere. If you're a dealership that has signs on it, no test drives allowed without... IDs and all these things that tell everybody everywhere they go in the dealership, no, no, no. Well, then you haven't built that culture of being friendly and building rapport with your customers. I'll give you one last example. All of us know we work for a dealership. We give out free hot dogs on Saturday, right? It's like the biggest cliche thing ever. And, and the grill really is a money machine. But I can't tell you how many times I've showed up on a Saturday and dealerships I've worked at where I have a sales guy walking to my office and go, Hey, listen, this customer's a jerk. Him and his whole family are just here to eat hot dogs, and I don't think they're buying a car. You know, I stand up, and I always ask him, well, who gives a shit? They're free. Give them out to him, whether he buys from us or not, right? We don't know if a guy's a buyer or a gal's a buyer. Be nice. Quit trying to find ways not to sell someone. Find more ways to sell someone. So create that culture, guys. Develop some power words, words like congratulations, thank you, uh, just addressing your customers as you would like to be addressed. And it's that simple. It's stuff we've learned in kindergarten. We should know as, as adults, but somewhere along the line, we, we have one bad customer who beats us up, and then we apply that to all the other customers who aren't like that. And that's when our numbers start to dwindle, and all of a sudden we're not selling as many customers. So guys, the bottom line is don't be a dick. I hope you like today's podcast. Uh, it is a favorite topic of mine. Please put your comments online. Ask me questions, the ways I could help you. If you need a different word track or you're struggling to get someone to, to build rapport with you, I can, I can provide many, many more questions that you can use. Again, they're the who, what, when, where, and whys. It's an attitude. You've got to smile on the phone. A customer can tell when you're smiling. You've got to be genuine. 
and you got to bring it each and every day, guys. And bringing it means you're just a genuinely good person and people know the difference. All right? Be good. Don't be a dick. And you will sell more cars. Before we go, one last reminder. Go to iTunes. Subscribe on Big Time Thinking. We really need your help getting the word out. This content you heard today, this is what we're going to be doing. This is what it's all about. It's about making you better salespeople, becoming better dealers, and all of us becoming better people as we journey through this life together. BigTimeThinking.com, you can find us there. Uh, and I just want to say thank you for listening. And until next time, folks, go out there and sell some cars.